many of these people that we minister to, it's one thing to be in a prison gymnasium or courtyard and to encounter the rich mercy of God, but what do they do when they go back from whence they came? And that's why this passage grabbed my attention in verse 1, you who were past dead. Verse 2, you once walked. Go down with me. We didn't even read this, but look at verse 11 of chapter 2. This is what Paul said to these people. He said, therefore, remember that at one time, you Gentiles in the flesh. Go down to verse 12. Paul says it again. Remember that you were at that time time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Somebody in this place, say amen to that. Paul here is describing the significance of the rich mercy of God. That's what he's saying. He's saying, now you've met Jesus. Now you've taken hold of the rich mercy of God. Things are different now. You can never be the same again. You've received the abundant life of Christ, and and your life has changed forever, for greater is He that's in you than he that's in the world. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Such is the rich mercy of God. And He gives two awful things to remember. He tells them that before you received the rich mercy of God, Number one, you were dead in your sins. That's what verse one is all about. You were dead. You're dead. You don't know Jesus. You're dead. There's no such thing as a sort of knowing Him. You cannot be born into it. There's no family plan for salvation. You either know the Lord Jesus Christ or you don't. He's either your Savior and Lord or He isn't. And if you do not know Jesus Christ... Paul is reminding these people who have come to accept the rich mercy of God that they were dead in their sins. Why were they dead in their sins? He tells us, number one, because they followed the ways of the world in verse 2. And number two, because they lived among the disobedient. Now, he uses two words here to describe spiritual deadness. Number one, the ways of the world. You know what that means, don't you? It's an acid test. If you have never received the rich mercy of God, your whole life is characterized by these two features of life without Christ. Number one, you will follow the ways of the world. And number two, you are living among the disobedient. That's what Paul says here in this passage. What are the ways of the world? The ways of the world are anything that pertains to everything that contradicts who God is. And if you find yourself gravitating toward the world, the Bible says you are dead in your trespasses and sins. So hard for us Americans to understand that. Because by and large, we are a very good people. But God's Word is very clear about the great divide between knowing Him and not knowing Him. He tells us these two awful things. Number one, that without Him, without the rich mercy of God in Christ Jesus, you're dead in your sins. And number two, you were condemned. We went to one particular place where they actually had a courtyard, a court, a court of law in the prison. And at one time, we went to go and use the facility, some of us, and and so the prison officials took us to where we needed to go, and we walked right by the entrance to the judge's court. There are people sitting out there. I looked through one of the windows, and there were two parents, I surmised, 
a mother and a father and a young man sitting there. Oh, was he dressed up to the hilt. He had on his best Sunday best. He was sitting there and I stood there and I watched him. I knew that he was about to make his appearance before the judge. I just stood there and offered a little prayer, didn't know them. Looked into the faces of two people that I surmise were his parents, anxiously awaiting. Evidently, this young man had transgressed the law. And it was up to that judge to decide whether to keep him inside or to send him home. The Bible says, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. There's going to come a time, folks, where we're all going to stand before the righteous judge, the one who is holy, holy, holy. You are condemned. And this passage here is so powerful. But God who is rich in mercy. What a powerful statement. But God who is rich and mercy. Love what he says in verse 13. But now in Christ, you who are once far off have been brought near through the blood of Jesus Christ. There can be no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. And because Jesus Christ gave his life on a cross, the rich mercy of God in Christ Jesus is made available to all who would repent before him, confess that sin, and come to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord.